पीछे नजर Good afternoon and welcome to the KUHSDenver.com Artist Nook. I'm Laura Paget, and you are going to be with me and my very special guest for the next half hour or so here on the Artist Nook. I want to welcome you on a beautiful Denver day. Wow, I keep saying that every week and I think it's just because KUHS um, in our studios right now we are in Northland and boy we just have had some lovely weather the last few weeks. The song that I started out with is called Shimcha. That song is off of the uh, CD from the phenomenal musical production and dance production Lord of the Dance. The music is by the great uh, Ronan Hardiman and of course if you're familiar with Irish dance, you know that this thing just took off and um, starred the absolutely incomparable Michael Flatley and many other stars who came out of America, Ireland, and different places around the world. I am welcoming in today a lady that I have danced with, and I have never actually danced for her, but she's taught me a lot, and um, against danced against some of her students, which was always hard. And um, her name is Miss Molly Bennett. She is from the Bennett School of Irish Dance. Hi, Molly. Hi. Oh, boy. I tell you, we giggle and we laugh because we have been friends for, uh, this is a friend that I can call her if we haven't talked for two years, like, oh, hi, and off we go. So dance has always been a big piece of my heart, and I've been very blessed to have a lot of lovely dance teachers. Miss Molly's one of those, um, and Judy DiNapoli is one, and uh, my very, very good friend who coached me when I was competing, Michelle Farrell. But that song, Shimcha, went out, um, in honor of my beautiful friends, the Regis Cayley dancers who danced to this, and uh, Molly Wegener, who uh, was a student of Molly Bennett's, and a beautiful, beautiful dancer who really reached quite, quite a high level, starting as an adult. She was just so talented and still is. And also Michelle Farrell and all the beautiful dancers I danced with at St. Brendan School of Irish Dance when I was dancing. So we're going to get right to a question for Miss Molly, and that is, how in the world did Irish dance become the phenomenon that it is today? Well, it started with the Eurovision Song Contest in 1994, and this is from musicians all over the Europe, uh, the community of dancing and music in the European area. And the interact between the time the contest finished and the time the awards were announced, the hosting company fills it with a special act. Well, that year it was being held in Ireland and Michael Whelan put together the song River Dance. Oh. And it included uh, the Japanese drums and Michael Flatley and Gene Butler from the United States. And everybody liked it so much that the next week, instead of the winner of the song contest, Riverdance was the number one song played on the radio all over Europe. The people were so excited about it by the following fall. This was in um, early February. Right. By the following fall, they had a whole stage show on in Dublin. And then it got so good, it went to... London and it, in London, the the, the entire cast um, was mostly comprised of people from uh, Ireland and England, except for Michael Flatley and Jean Butler. And then it moved to New York with Colin Dunn. Mm. At that point, the 
public PBS picked up the show and started using it as a fundraiser. And all of a sudden, for the first time in the history of Irish dancing, there was an access to video of dancing. And everybody looked at it and went, oh, I want to do that. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it, it exploded. When I first started dancing back in the <clears throat> early 80s. So you were <laughs> dancing before? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. For about 10 about 12 years Whoa, before that, I didn't know that one. and um, we danced in a church basement. Uh -huh. We had a, uh, a teacher from Ireland who came over um, about once every six weeks, and then his son came over and stayed in San Antonio with us, and I came back to Denver, and there were all these people um, who were doing Irish dancing, which I had not seen before. It started with about probably in about maybe 20,000 people um, in the United States at the time I started dancing. And at its height, there were probably about a million and a half people worldwide dancing. Wow. So, and now you're talking about performance competitions? Everybody doing the dancing, both performance com competition and Kaylee. Kaylee means uh -huh. dance. Uh, group dancing is kind of like square dancing, sure. and uh, the it's a get together, and people do all sorts of dancing together. They may have solo dancing as a uh, exhibition. They may have Irish musicians there, and people will dance to live music, or the musicians will play something slow so that everybody else can go have a beer. Uh, <laughs> That's right, big part of that. Yes, yes. So all over the world, it was absolutely fabulous. About um, 99, 2000, around there was the beginning of the big numbers of people dancing because they had all seen it and they started as little kids and the little kids just went um, over the moon about sure. it. Absolutely. And um, so the numbers kept coming and the competitions uh, grew, the numbers of competitions competitions grew and when you have the competitions you have it on TV it encourages people to join in and then somebody else knows about it and they join in and then you you go around and then you have parents who come and sit and watch <laughs> like and, look at it and say I can do that yeah. yes as a matter of fact Let's my, hear that. I would my hear oldest story. daughter we were stationed in San Antonio, and I was playing in a band at that point. I, I played Penny Whistle and Baran, the drum. And the daughter of the fiddle player had my daughter go home for a sleepover. And the next day, Laura, the, the fiddler's daughter, took my daughter, Ariel, to class with her. And Ariel came back from that weekend saying, I found what I want to do. And I'm going, oh, sure, here, let's go try this. And so every day, I'm every week, I'm driving down. And it's it, the time-wise, someone had to stay there. You couldn't drive home and come back. And after about, I don't know, three months, four months, you're looking there going, I can do that. Sure. So we started an adult class. And there was also a Kaylee group. And we would meet at a local bar yeah. a pub and then we would make make the teacher get up and and we'd all have the Kaylee stuff and while the Kaylee dancers would take a break the rest of us would make him get up and teach us another step oh my <laughs> oh that's wonderful that's a great story and so I think that um is a big draw is when parents are sitting there and I think this happened in the school I was in St. Brendan's um Parents are sitting there waiting for the kids, and usually most dance studios are open. They have the glass, or it's an open air kind of thing. And so parents have access to watching their kids. And after, the music is contagious. It, the, the spirit of Irish dance is infectious. And I've said this before on this show. Um, I do Irish dance. I've done uh, African dance, Jewish dance. I teach sacred dance. I've done clogging and uh, tap. But man, I'm telling you, just trying to pick music up for this show, which of course is on my computer, I just start crying. The memories came back and I was like, that was 20 years of my life from when I was 46 to when I was 65. Well, about 64, I did, I did a piece for a dance uh, studio I'm in from, again, the Lord of the Dance 
Gypsy, but I did my own choreography to it and told the story. And that's one thing about this particular art, Molly, and we've talked a little bit. We cannot really know for sure the history of Irish dance. So many varieties that are handed down, right? Well, most of the Irish, um, the, the written Irish um, about um, the history, there's very little of it that that's still right. um, survives because of the number of conquests, the number of people coming into Ireland. The first ones were probably um, about 5,000 BC. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, and so there's been someone there in uh, the whole area of the Celtic Islands, Scotland and Ireland, and um, um, places like Iona between the two, mm -hmm. where they have uh, historical um, diggings. And in fact, if you ever have the chance to go to Dublin, just north of there is Newgrange. And Newgrange. if you're there, Newgrange, yes, uh, you can see sunrise through the, uh, the, the where they've lined up so that the window comes down to the center of the, that's for the solstice, the sunrise comes right down into the center of the, right. the, the building. But they've got some records of dancing. In fact, when, um, oh heavens, um, the High King of Tara, um, I've forgotten his name right now, uh, but they have a list okay. of who was sitting in the um, seating because as you, uh, the tables you were lined up with, it depended on your rank. Of course. So there we have the king and his uh, um, counselors all at the high table. And then from there, that goes down in rows. And they also have um, a dish of salt. And that was, salt was very uncommon. You didn't have clean salt. They had to process it uh, from sea salt. And unlike the uh, salt that uh, is dug, which is clean and white, and is often used as a monetary exchange. Sure. But uh, there's the, uh, the, the dish of salt. So that's where the expression came, whether you were above the salt or below the salt, de uh, wow. depicted where your, your status was. And the dancers were above the salt. I so, see. Yeah. Oh, wow. And um, my you were one of the first people when I started teaching the Kayla class at Regis. I remember calling you and you gave me certain books. You said, go and read these, go and read these, because it wasn't enough for me to teach. Okay, here's how we're going to do our threes. Here's how we're going to do our sevens. Here's a jig. Here's a reel. Um, it, I wanted them to know the history as much as we could find. Um, many different groups have recorded it. Um, John Cullinan. John Cullinan. Cullinan uh, is famous in Ireland, famous dancer, famous author, and I read, read his books. And the stuff that was in there just really got to my heart. My mother was Irish and Scottish, but it got to my heart to say, this was a people who said, we will not be denied. Our culture will not die. They found ways to keep this alive, and in fact, to disseminate it throughout the world. I have a friend, uh, Delia Grath, who danced with me for years. Delia spent a lot of time in northern Spain, in Galicia. Galicia. Yes. And not Galicia, folks, that's Greek, but in Galicia. And Delia told me about hearing people on the bagpipes. And what there's a wonderful group uh, whose name has now gone out of my brain that we both danced to. There's a um, actual piper there. His name is Hevia, H-E-V-I-A, yes. okay. Hevia. And some of his music is unbelievable. Right. And as a matter of fact, uh, Carlos Dunas is going to be here sometime this month. Uh, Celtic Connection, which is a right. newsletter, right. New, excuse me, newspaper yeah. uh, in the Denver area, um, has um, he's sponsoring this uh, uh concert and it he's oh unbelievably good plays celtic music right so that's something you want to look for folks and we're going to give you a little bit more details too about where you can see molly's uh school dancing but as i worked through the history what i found was and then other people would tell me these stories to other dancers other teachers that many of the dances actually had stories behind them they had been uh, after brian maru and his conquest 
uh, walls of limerick, uh, the patterns of that moving in and out with the, the occupation and, and the actual borders of, of limerick being sort of relocated. Waves of Tory, this was one that somebody told me. And again, folks, we can't document this. This is folklore. But that it was written by a man who sat on uh, Tory and watched the waves come in. And he you know, wrote this dance. And holy cow, if you ever do Waves of Tory, that is. That's exactly what happens. Uh, Tory is an island off the northwest corner of Ireland. And uh, as a matter of fact, when you take the test to become a teacher, that's one of the questions they ask you. And it does represent the um, action of the waves as they go in and out. So you go over and under. The dancing as we have it right now was begun to be compiled in about 1890 something. Okay. And um, as they, the uh, Irish the, uh, Gaelic League started to agitate for the uh, independence of Ireland and the dancers moved out of I guess we want to say moved out of hiding again. Yes. It had been very much suppressed and they came back and they had dancing masters. So the people who did know how to do it would go from town to town and teach a class probably every six weeks. Sure. <laughs> <like that. laughs> yeah, all right. And they would teach their steps and then they would move to the next town. And so they were um, peripatetic. Yeah, isn't that a lovely word? It is a lovely <laughs> word. It almost sounds like you need medication for that. I'm a peripatetic. As, but a, yeah, yeah. as a matter of fact, I have a video from a talk that a lady came from the University of Cork over here to the Irish the, the Irish Fellowship Club, um, and she videotaped these three gentlemen who had taken classes from one of the last um, Irish dancing masters in the early 1900s. So at the time she videotaped them, they were in their late 80s and they could still get up and do a hornpipe. It was absolutely amazing. So of course, being me, I videotaped her videotape. And so I show go. people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not proprietary at that point. But um, I want to take just a second and acknowledge our international visitors. That's how fast our half hour goes by. So we have people here. Uncle Henry's bringing up the board. Well, we have Turkey. We have, um, what am I? I'm not seeing it very well for some reason. Madagascar. We have people from Venezuela. We have Germany here today. We have people from, of course, the UK. I saw that gone by earlier. And Istanbul. We had uh, another one went by from Ireland. So you know we've got uh, Ireland. Here's Shelby, United States. Aurora, United States. I, I guess I probably know where that is. Broomfield, United States. Uh, and Brazil. Brazil. Uh, we want to thank you. Here's the United States again and uh, Germany. And earlier, as I said, we saw Ireland, Scotland, and um, the UK. Here's India. Hello, India. Uganda. Um, many of these Canada. Oh, yeah. Canada has a huge uh, a huge following in this in this art. So we want to thank you for joining us, my friends, because this is uh, KUHSDenver.com. I'm Laura Paget. This is the Artist Nook. We are here every first and third Friday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard or Mountain Daylight Time, depending on where we are in our year. My special guest is Molly Bennett, owner, operator, artistic director, director, choreographer, choreographer, and I'm going to say probably bookkeeper. Dress. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. I, I might make my husband do the bookkeeper. There, that's a good I girl. will make the dresses. And dressmaker. Dressmaker. Huge to know because, man, those dresses are something. Um, from Bennett School of Irish Dancing here in Denver, Colorado. So you talked about how you got into Irish dance. And how did you decide to have the school. What made you decide to come and do a school? I mean, that's a business. Any kind, I always talk to dance school operators and they never come out in the black. They're always in the red. And, um, yeah, yeah. It requires somebody with another job to help make this go. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, it was actually totally bizarre. We had danced with a school in San Antonio. We came here to Denver. There at that point were two schools. Um, the school that I was with and Judy Dinopoli was uh -huh. with, um, the teacher 
went with her husband to Minneapolis and closed her school. So there we were with five orphan dancers oh. and Judy and I and uh, Heidi Montgomery. And we went to the city of Denver pipe band. And while we were there, Maureen McTaggart Hall, right. who uh, ran the McTaggart school, was willing to teach us steps. All right. So there we are with this little group that starts with the uh, uh, Denver Pipe Band. And then Judy went to Maureen to dance with her. And because my kids were dancing with another school, I was not allowed to dance with her. But she would teach me how to be a teacher. She wouldn't let me dance with her but she taught me how to be a teacher. Yeah. So then we started the school. I actually started it as the Denver Cayley Club, right. and all these people would come. And right. at, at one point, we had about about 40 people in the Cayley Club. And I was there. I remember on the Coma right. Street. Right. On yes. the Coma Street. Yes. Yeah, I drove and, down there. And uh, mm -hmm. we, um, then I got my teacher certification, which if anybody wants to do um, a really obnoxious test. It took three days to do it, and uh, <laughs> five pints of blood yeah. and many, many pints of beer, uh, and lots and lots and lots of sweat. Yeah, because you have <laughs> so, to dance it. You have to be able to. My understanding is dance teachers in Irish dance also have to be able to know the dance in Gaelic. Is that true? Only, only if I'm going to teach in oh, Ireland. Oh, okay. But I okay. do know they they send us out a. Uh, CD with all the ways to say the words. <laughs> oh boy, no wonder she knew Sheem Song. Um, and by the way, that word uh, we were going to tell you means entertainment. Sheem Song. Yes. Sheem Song. Sheem Song. It's a, and it's a fantastic dance. It's a fantastic uh, piece of music that has both the reels and the jigs. These are the two uh, probably most famous. But well, it's actually the mainstay of them. The types Absolutely. of uh, dancing they are. All of the dancing depends on the music. So if you were doing a reel, a reel is written in eight eight time and it's got a very regular rhythm. Dum da dum da dee 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 dee. And then if you're going to go to a jig, it's da da dum da dee dee da da dum dee dum da dee dee da. If you were going to learn it, you would play Pop Goes the Weasel. So. That's right. That's how they <laughs> teach the little kids, right? Pop goes the weasel. Yeah. But then That's they also have hornpipes and then hard shoe. Hornpipes are done in the hard shoe. Ooh. Jigs are done in the hard shoe. Yeah. Reels are done in the hard shoe. Most of the time, the people are captivated by the reels done That's in their right. hard shoe. Hard shoes used to be made with nails in the tips of the oh, shoes, wow. nails in the heels and tips, and um, they would started this way because the shoes were made out of leather and they would put an extra layer of leather to keep them from wearing out on the cobblestone streets and then of course they got slippery so they put nails in it and then when you'd walk into a house with wooden floors they made noise so oh, then they put sake. the dances to uh, hard shoes yeah so that was the original tab Yes. Yeah. Yes. And now the hard shoes are fiberglass. Yes. Very traditional fiberglass. Fiber, well, and it's hard to make noise in those things after you've tapped. Because yes, tapping and clogging, we, we do. Uh, and I, I have a funny story. I, uh, my daughter-in-law, Lisa, if she's listening today, hi. She <laughs> is just, she's just a sweetie. And um, she said to me one time, she said, you know, I'd really like to learn uh, tap dance. I said, all right, I know somebody to teach you tap dance. And I wasn't a very good tap dancer at all, so I knew I couldn't teach her. And I said, let's go down here to Miss Gwen Bowen, yes. who was a Denver icon, yes. Miss Gwen Bowen, Gwen Bowen School of Dance. And uh, we we're in the class, and Lisa's going along, and I'm going along. Pretty soon Bowen comes up, and she looks at me, she goes, you're an Irish dancer. <laughs> and I went, bust. <laughs> because it's such a different way to move your feet, that turnout, yes. that slapping, that smacking, and um, and on your toes. Very you're much on, on your, on your toes. toes and tap, but not like Irish. And she just she said, would you come and teach a master class? So I taught for one or two semesters there for Miss Gwen and taught some reels and jigs. It was very, very fun. Uh, but she's also the one that led me into sacred dance, and that's a whole different story. But... Um, I really had the best time, and uh, I never did learn a uh, tap from her. I went and took it from someone else, but my thing was cloggy because it was so much, well, I would say it was closer. Oh, it's Irish. much, much yeah, closer. Yeah, yeah. And they've, got, they've got uh, dancing like this that combines uh, all over. Appalachian clogging is uh, a blend of Scottish, Irish, German, Polish, okay. and it all comes together. There's also a form of Nova Scotia. Uh, where they do um, hard shoe dancing. And it's probably the Scottish version of hard shoe after all this 
Scottish people got kicked out of Scotland. Yeah, yeah. well, and they did a number of them. Yeah. And that. they went, then they went to Ireland, <laughs> and then they went to Nova Scotia. And there's also French Canadian. All of these things have heart shoes. Everywhere you go, all the way around the world, there's some form of dance, some form. And dancing is one of the best things you can do for your body and your heart and your soul. Amen. That's right. Amen. And I have said that before about the NIH study I studied when I was in grad school that talked about it being uh, way up at the very top of uh, dementia prevention. Yay. Way, yay. Of course, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm uh, a testimony to that or not, but you have to remember patterns. You have to work in a team. Your yes. balance improves. Uh, and this isn't just Irish folks. This is any kind of dance. But today we are talking about Irish. We're talking about the phenomenon of uh, Irish dance. And before we let Molly go, I want to ask her just very briefly, because we only have a few more minutes, what do you see as the future? Well, unfortunately, because it was so explosive at the time, the amount that it it increased will never ever happen again, but it okay. also will never fade again. It is all over the world. There are places like uh, they've got them in, in China. They have them in Aust a lot in Australia. They have them in uh, the Philippines, in Burma, mm -hmm. um, South America, Argentina. In fact, there's a large uh, Irish community in Argentina. So it's it's literally all over the world, and everybody now knows about it. So sure. it's... And it's a wonderful way to stay in shape. And I want to say that I started as an adult. I was 46 years old when I started. And I'm 66 now, and I just kind of quit a couple years ago. Um, but I've done a few competitions. In fact, I wrote a story called Silver and Gold, and it went into Chicken Soup for the Soul Think Possible in 2015. It was just a hoot. I, I was so blessed to be able to put Irish dance out there and to put uh, adults forward because people think, oh, we're adults. We'll never be able to do oh, that. No, well, you're not going to be able to do the leaps, perhaps. But there's Molly's school is so adult friendly. This is one of the things I loved about your school. So was Judy DiNapoli. Yes. Yeah. We still have a lot of adults. Anybody's welcome. Come on. I started at 32 and I'm 65. So, you know, <gasps> oh, I can still dance. Yes, um, you can. And it's uh, our, our major uh, studio is down near the Denver Dumb Friends League, um, Evans I-25 uh, area. I uh, have a lot of adults who dance. I have kids who dance. I am a certified teacher, which is what you have to have to be competition-wise. We still have a lot of people who compete. Um, but it's not so, necessary. No. So don't feel intimidated, folks. No. And um, how could people get a hold of you, Miss Molly, if they wanted we to? We have both a Facebook page right. and a website. And um, call me at any point. Um, we are doing a show down at Inglewood High School on Saturday April 8th, okay. um, and Good. you're cordially invited to come and do that. You're cordially invited to come and um, take a class for free and see if you like it. And Your contact information is on your website, and yes. what is that website? Bennett. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> been at school. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, I drew her a curveball. Well, my, my ben it's, I, it's Ben at School of Irish Dancing yes. dot com. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Well, because I've been on it. Because <laughs> I, you know, I, I had to get her number, make sure it was the one I still had years ago. Yeah. And I'm so grateful you've been here today. My thank gosh, you. we didn't even get to talk about dresses or anything, but we will. Oh, we'll okay. do that next year. Yes. Next year. Uh, because, you know, for some of us, Irish dance will be for ever in our hearts and every time I hear it I was dancing yesterday my husband's like yes yeah you still love that stuff don't you I said I always love that stuff because my mommy was a Celt too so um, I'm hooked in for life but I wanted to thank you for being with us I want to tell y'all that on the 13th or I'm sorry on the 17th of March my next guest is Mr. Roger Lopez and because that's St. Patrick's Day I thought you know there are very few things as magical as Ireland and St. Patrick's Day. So we're going to bring in uh, Roger Lopez, who is a professional performing magician. Yay! And Mr. Magic, he'll be here with us that day. So 2 o'clock p.m., uh, March the 17th. Please join us on the Artist Nook. I'm Laura Padgett. If you want to uh, find out what I'm up to, what where my books are, where things are uh, you know, happening for me, including where they're for sale here locally in Denver or online, please uh, check out my website, Laura L. Padgett, P-A-D.
G-E-T-T -T dot com. I'd love to hear from you. There's a contact me button. And if you have questions for Miss Molly or any of my guests, you are welcome to leave them there. But now we're going to say bless your weekend. Get your Irish on. And just because Miss Molly and I both have Scottish roots, I chose this song to lead us out today. It's by the famous, world famous, master fiddler, Alistair Fraser, And it's called Laughing Wolf. And it's Laughing Wolf. And of course, there's another part. Often they combine reels and jigs. So we have Laughing Wolf and Mountain Madness by Mr. Alistair Fraser on his album, The Road North. Enjoy. Go dance. Get your Irish on. It's March. Love you. Come to the parade. Woo, yeah. And go see Miss Molly. Saturday, March 11th. There you go. Downtown. Otherwise, catch up on her show. Uh, try to get down to Inglewood to see that show. This is a tremendous troupe. You'll love them. So, God bless. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. Bye-bye.